Hello, my name is Emma, and I welcome you to my channel. 100 days since Hamas attacked Israel, triggering war in Gaza 100 days ago, the previously unthinkable happened in Israel. A state, born out of adversity and war only 75 years ago, woke up to what some have since described as a threat to its very existence. On Saturday night, in Tel Aviv, the events of October 7 were commemorated by thousands of people. Uppermost on the minds of everyone were the around 130 hostages abducted by Hamas and still being held in Gaza, although some of them may not still be alive. Just after dawn 100 days ago, thousands of heavily armed Hamas fighters stormed through and over the Gaza border fence in several different places. U.S. delivers private message to Iran after Yemen strikes. President Biden says the U.S. has delivered a, a private message to Iran about the Houthis in Yemen after the U.S. carried out a second strike on the group. We delivered it privately and we're confident we're well prepared, he said without giving further details. The U.S. said its latest strike was a follow-on action, targeting radar. Iran denies involvement in attacks by the Houthis in the Red Sea. However Tehran is suspected of supplying the Houthis with weapons, and the U.S. says Iranian intelligence is critical to enabling them to target ships. Joint UK-US airstrikes targeted nearly 30 Houthi positions in the early hours of Friday with the support of Western allies including Australia and Canada. Queen Margrethe, will abdication cause a ripple effect? When Queen Margrethe II of Denmark steps down on Sunday, many Danes will be bereft. Now that she is abdicating in favor of Crown Prince Frederick, 55, the question is whether she has broken a taboo for all three Nordic royal families. Denmark's chain-smoking, flamboyant, polyglot Danish queen, who Prime Minister Meta Frederiksen described as the epitome of Denmark, spent more than half a century on the throne. Danes have been proud of her quirks, her outspoken rejection of mobile phones and the internet, and her relaxed and playful air. UK had no choice but to strike Houthis, Cameron. The UK had no choice but to take military action against Houthis in Yemen over their attacks in the Red Sea, the Foreign Secretary has said. Lord Cameron said the UK had given the group warning after warning, before joining US-led strikes this week. Writing in the Sunday Telegraph, he said prices would rise in the UK if Houthis blocked important trade routes. The pro-Hamas group have been attacking ships in the Red Sea, claiming to be targeting Israel over the war in Gaza. Their attacks on cargo ships, some of which have no clear connection to Israel, have led major shipping companies to divert vessels away from the Red Sea, instead taking a longer route around southern Africa. Genocide case against Israel, where does the rest of the world stand on the momentous allegations? South Africa says more than 50 countries have expressed support for its case at the United Nations top court accusing Israel of genocide against Palestinians in the war in Gaza. Others, including the United States, have strongly rejected South Africa's allegation that Israel is violating the UN Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Many more have remained silent. The world's reaction to the landmark case that was heard Thursday and Friday at the International Court of Justice in The Hague shows a predictable global split when it comes to the inextricable, 75-year-old problem of Israel and the Palestinians. Sunday marks 100 days of their bloodiest ever conflict. North Korea launches a ballistic missile toward the sea in its first missile test this year. North Korea fired a ballistic missile toward the sea on Sunday, its neighbors said, in its first missile launch this year, as the North is expected to further raise regional animosities in an election year for its rivals South Korea and the United States. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said North Korea launched an unidentified ballistic missile off the North's east coast, but gave no further details like how far the weapon flew. French Foreign Minister visits Kiev and pledges solidarity as Russia launches attacks. France's new foreign minister arrived in the Ukrainian capital of Kiev on Saturday to meet with his counterpart in a sign of support for Ukraine as Russia's full-scale invasion nears its second anniversary. Stefan Sojourn noted that Ukraine was his first destination abroad since his appointment in a government reshuffle this week. Ukraine is and will remain France's priority, he said. The defense of the fundamental principles of international law is being played out in Ukraine. Scientists crack mystery of how MS genes spread. Why are diseases more common in some parts of Europe than others, and why are Northern Europeans taller than their Southern counterparts? An international team of scientists say they have unearthed the answer in the DNA of ancient teeth and bones. The genes which protected our ancestors from animal diseases now raise the risk of multiple sclerosis as MS. 
The researchers call their discovery a quantum leap in understanding the evolution of the disease. And they say it could change opinions on what causes MS and have an impact on the way it is treated. More adults sought help for ADHD during pandemic, contributing to drug shortages prescriptions for ADHD treatments surged among adults during the COVID-19 pandemic, helping to fuel lingering shortages that frustrate parents and doctors. New prescriptions for stimulants used to treat the condition jumped for young adults and women during a two-year window after the pandemic hit in March 2020, according to a study published Wednesday in JAMA Psychiatry. Prescriptions also soared for non-stimulant treatments for adults of all ages, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration researchers found. From a ludicrously capacious bag to fake sausages, succession of props draw lux prices. Someday soon, someone will be walking down the street proudly carrying a ludicrously capacious bag, bought for a ludicrously capacious price. The voluminous Burberry tote is one of the most famous props used on a succession, the famed HBO saga of the Roy family dynasty, and it sold at auction Saturday for $18,750. But that bag, which became notorious when Matthew McFadden's Tom Wamsgans savagely ridiculed it, wasn't even the priciest item sold from the set of the addictive drama expected to also clean up at Monday's Emmy Awards, on the heels of its Golden Globes wins. No, that was a set of pink index cards containing Roman Roy's eulogy notes for his father's funeral, a speech he never gave. Beginning, my father Logan Roy was a great man, the four cards represent the tragic failure of Roman, Kieran Culkin, to meet the moment. They have a new life now with someone who paid $25,000 and hopefully will frame them nicely. Thank you thank you so much, we'll meet very soon.